just finishing off giving my workstation a bit of a good clean because if people are breathing out and coughing onto my keyboard or onto my desktop then it's quite possible that they could cough out the virus in their droplets and uh, I could touch that with my fingers and it can get into my uh, into my mucous membranes that's quite possible now talking about office workers at the moment if you work in an office then it might be worth just going onto your local national website for this sort of thing and printing out this is just this, this is the one for washing hands with hand gel and this is the one for washing hands with soap and water so why not print those out put them on the wall above the sink just put them around the place and uh, put the poster up by your workstation just, you know just remind keep reminding yourself so it's uh, today is Saturday the 7th of March you are most welcome now this is the number of cases the number of fatalities and the number of recovered recovered normally means that they've had no fever for 10 days and the chest x-ray is improving and that they've had one or two or more negative swabs for the presence of the COVID-19 virus. Now I'm asked lots of questions about the seasonality of this virus. Is it going to get better in summer as influenza does? Well we do have some data to say that the virus does not survive as long on warmer surfaces but we also know that the virus has spread quite a lot in warmer countries. So I'm suspecting it's not going to have the seasonality that influenza has. Having said that, it is killed by direct ultraviolet sunlight, so that's good. Ultraviolet light is, light is the planet's natural disinfection of surfaces. So yes, the sunlight's going to be good, but of course only places where the sunlight gets. So we still don't really have good data about the seasonality. And talking about surfaces... I've just read a study that says we touch our faces more than 20 times an hour. So touching contaminated surfaces, we're always touching our faces. It's very hard not to. And this shows the absolute pivotal importance of ongoing good hygiene, whether it's with gels or with soap and water, ongoing good hand hygiene. Now, moving on to the United States. This ship, the Grand Princess, I've just discovered that's the sister ship of the ship that we had the problem with, the trouble with in Japan. Uh, 21, 21 people on the ship are, are uh, tested positive with COVID-19 virus, 19 crew, two passengers. And the passengers are all confined to their cabins. And uh, Mike Pence has said they're all going to be tested. And 10 people from a previous voyage have tested positive, now they're back on land. Now, talking about this, the politicians in America said they're now shipping millions of test kits, which is good. And uh, now Seattle's been a bit of an epicenter, actually. So Washington, um, University of Washington State, uh, are closing from Monday because someone tested positive. Now, notice that they've tested because they're closing because someone tested positive. So what we've been saying is we need to stop simply reacting to things as they happen and be more proactive about this. So really the time to close the university was last week because this infected person could have been spreading the virus around for the last week now. They are reacting to an infected case rather than being proactive <clears throat> to prevent infective cases. And cases have also been reported in Indiana, Indiana Pennsylvania Minnesota, Kentucky and Oklahoma. So this spread around the states is most concerning. Now New York State um, has reported uh, 22 new cases and has got 4,000 people in quarantine. So again quite a lot of new cases there in New York State. And there's no question, this has been admitted now, and we've been mentioning this ourselves for some days, that limited testing has been a problem and the, the authorities in New York State saying this has been a problem. And as far as I, I could tell, as of just a few days ago, only 1,900 tests have been conducted in all of the United States. So um, this is some pretty serious ball dropping here by only testing such small people in the whole continental United States. It is getting better now though as we'll see shortly. Now, um, in terms of reactivity and proactivity, Texas is cancelling the South by Southwest Festival, which half a million people were due to come, so that's encouraging. 
and Miami has cancelled the Ultra Music Festival and the Oka Festival, saving a million people from meeting together. So again, these are encouraging signs of proactivity. Although I'm not quite sure of the details here, but I think sponsors pulling out was part of the thinking. So again, some of these organisers may be responding to sponsors pulling out. They may be reacting to sponsors pulling out rather than people being proactive, thinking about the health of the people that are going to attend. The President of the United States has visited the Centre for Disease Control and Mike Pence, the Vice President, has said 900,000 test kits to be sent, uh, tests sent out this week. He said he's sent out 200,000 today and he's sending out 4 million next week. So this is good. So by this time next week, the United States should have much more information about the extent of spread in the continental United States. It's a pity this testing has taken so long to get going. Now, Dr. Aylwood of the World Health Organization, who led the team into China, on the ground in China, uh, has been speaking. And he's saying China is getting the epicenter this Wuhan Hubei epicenter under control, showing this can be done, indicating that other countries need to do likewise, but he underlines the need for speed, isolation and quarantine. So I'm afraid so far we have been reacting, not being proactive. We haven't exhibited the speed that Dr. Elwood says we need. Uh, there's a, he also said there's a lack of world testing and preparation. He also complimented Chinese culture that they've realised the importance for this. And an important part of this, he says, is that the population needs to understand what's going on. There's a tremendous need, as we're doing now, I suppose, for, for education of the public. So they understand and they're working together. Because in this, whether you're in a city or in a world, really, you are as weak as the weakest link. So if you've got someone down the street who's practicing very bad hygiene and spreading the virus and you're practicing good hygiene and not spreading the virus, then it could well spread from them to you. We need to move together to this on this collectively. And he also said that further waves were possible in China or other places, further waves of the virus. Now, I get criticised a lot for uh, complimenting the Chinese, and I know that they in a sense, started this with their cover-up in the beginning. But the uh, steps they've taken since then have been very encouraging. So it's been a tale of two attitudes, really, in China, but now much, much better with significant social shutdown in China. Now, my own country, the UK, up to 164 cases as of a few hours ago, we believe, two deaths and 30 cases of community transmission. Now, this means cases where the epidemiology of the virus isn't possible to ascertain. In other words, we don't know where these people got it. They just got it from other people in the community, which means there's community spread. Now, despite what we know about the transmission characteristics of the virus, despite the fact that we know there's these cases in the UK, despite the fact that we know there's been two deaths, despite the fact that we know there's been 30 cases of community transmission, I've had a concerned email from a resident of Gloucestershire because there's a huge festival kicking off next week on the 10th to the 13th called the Cheltenham Festival, which is to do with horse racing. Quarter of a million people are due to attend and be close together. Now, does this strike you as being proactive? I don't think so. We need speed. We need proactivity. And basically, at the moment, in my country, we are not seeing it. South Korea, um, another uh, 274 cases since Saturday, now over 7,000 cases in South Korea, so uh, a developing epicentre there. Although a lot of the cases are community spread, there is, there is uh, a lot of people, a lot of spread is coming from the clusters which are starting to be controlled. Four more deaths, making 46 deaths. Now in Daegu, the epicentre, um, they've closed down a complete housing complex there with 146 residents because 46 have been infected. Just shows how much people living close together can spread the infection. So an important lesson to learn there from, from, from Daegu.
and they've closed this complex down. People are just, uh, um, I think food is being delivered there. Now, I don't know the details of this, but the South Korean are using uh, phone apps to track the quarantine. So whatever that is, it's quite clever. They make a lot of mobile phones there. And the uh, Korean Center for Disease Control has asked people to refrain from outdoor activities, to maintain social distancing, good respiratory hygiene, good home ventilation. So, if you cough or sneeze, get a tissue out of your pocket because you're carrying some. Cough or sneeze into the tissue. Then get the tissue and fold it up so the contaminated surface is inside. And I haven't coughed in this one so I can open it up. So the surface where I coughed was all on the inside there like that. But I've just closed it up to catch it. And I'm going to drop it straight into my bin. So um, good respiratory hygiene, good home ventilation, and then of course regular washing with the alcohol wipes or whatever you've got at your disposal to wash with. Soap and water is probably better, but um, and just rub it till the alcohol is dry basically with the alcohol wipes. So um, that's the advice from the Korean Centre for Disease Control. Now, um, the Korean Centre for Disease Control are also saying that symptomatic people with respiratory symptoms um, should be uh, self-quarantining for a few days to see if it's going to develop into a COVID-19 infection. And this kind of makes sense. So people have any symptoms, they should self-isolate. And then within a few days, if they're getting symptoms, they should know if they have the dry cough, the fever, the fatigue, the myalgia, the muscle pain, the things that we now go with the onset of this condition. So um, the Korean number, well, the number in the UK is 111. The number in Korea is 1339, apparently, uh, to go. And when you ring that, you're told to be self-quarantined and then be directed to a, a screening facility, which is not in a GP, it's separate, not in a doctor's, not in a hospital. So that's good. They don't want people to be going to hospitals and doctor's surgeries if they think they're infected. The Koreans are advocating wearing face masks and they say if you're going for testing, use your own vehicle. Don't share vehicles to get there. Now, Italy, unfortunately, is turning into a bit of a European epicentre. And the infection has spread out to several other places from Italy. And Italy itself, if you watch the news reports, is very closed down at the moment. And there's been 800 new cases since yesterday. So well over four and a half uh, confirmed cases now in Italy with 197 deaths. Now, that and that give you 4.2 percent. Now, this is a this is an alarmingly high death rate. I'm not quite sure what's going on to cause this high death rate, but it's certainly disconcertingly high death rate we're seeing in Italy at the moment. Now, in Iran, having started off very poorly, they're now using the power of the state to try and control the outbreak. So all Friday prayers have been cancelled all over the country and the government is using force to uh, stop people travelling around the country. The, the travelling ban is being enforced if it's required so it looks like the Iranian government albeit belatedly all after even after many people in the government and the parliament themselves have been sick that they are starting now to take effective measures towards quarantine and social distancing and isolation of infected cases but we do know unfortunately the, the, the disease is, is really quite well established in Iran already now, notice the small country of Iceland. From memory, I think Iceland's got about 360,000 population, quite a small population, but 45, um, 45 cases confirmed there already. Uh, now, China, uh, no new cases in Hubei province. This is really quite remarkable. Now, I think there is some new cases in Wuhan city, but in the province round about, they're saying there's no new cases. and. Um, I, I, be, I believe this now. I, I don't believe a lot of the early stuff that came out of China, but the, the Chinese approach now is, is good. It, it was appalling, now it's good. So I, I accept this, but because, and the reason I accept it as well as, as, well as 
the reasons I've mentioned is because there's such a lot of social distancing going on, such a lot of shutdown going on in Hubei especially and in other provinces in China. People have been kept in their complexes in Hubei since January, so they're not moving around, they're just keeping in their own housing complexes. They're maintaining personal space, they are wearing masks, although we're not too sure about the efficacy of wearing masks, but the Chinese are insisting on it. They're disinfecting the streets regularly and there's disinfecting flights. So we have like, uh, well, we don't have it in England, but in the States you have like crop dusters where the plane comes down or and they'll, they'll spray disinfectant actually over, over the city. So uh, quite uh, dramatic disinfecting uh, protocols being carried out in, in Wuhan, Hubei and other places in China. And the hope in Wuhan is going to be open in, um, in May. That is the hope. But of course, as Dr. Elwood has mentioned, there's the possibility of uh, new uh, waves, unfortunately. So just a few of the catchphrases from today, worthy of full acceptance. Global containment is now needed. Remember, we've always been worried about this being established in a poor country with poor health care from there spreading to everywhere else. So this really does need to be a global effort now. And today I'm making a declaration. Um, you know, this idea of not shaking hands. We need to stop shaking hands. We need to stop social kissing. So this elbow bump idea. Now, today I'm declaring that elbow bumps are fr friendly, welcoming, polite, correct, pragmatic, because they stop infection, responsible, considerate to other people. And I'm officially saying that elbow bumps are now the cool thing to do. Believe that if you want, but uh, <laughs> but the science is good. The science is good. Don't forget to wash your hands. Remember, coughs and sneezes spread diseases. So catch it, bin it, kill it, as we mentioned earlier in this video. And we just need more countries to move from reacting to being uh, proactive.